Assess and know your child's emotional and psychological world. Step back and assess to see the patterns of behavior. Map the hysterical moments, who, what, where, when, and how. Measure the intensity, frequency, and duration of the hysterical behavior. Know your child's window of stress tolerance. Each one of us has a window of stress tolerance. The larger your window of stress tolerance, the more you can tolerate. Kids who've had early life experiences, adverse experiences, have smaller windows of stress tolerance. They can only absorb and take in so much. And if you think about five senses, even I go into Costco and go, wow, there's so many choices. I'm overwhelmed. Think about a child in a big store like that. There's only so much a child can filter in their brains and, and make sense of and the, the smells, the sounds, the tastes, all what they're visually seeing. I always ask parents also in assessment, what do you think is your child's most intense sense? Is the intensity of a sensation is what needs to be soothed and nurtured the most? I had a child the other day and I asked them what sense is most intense for them. And they said sound. So we understood that they need more interventions that help soothe the sounds in their environment. We assess their school environments. We assess their home environments. So we talked about getting noise-canceling headphones, having them available in the car and at home. She identified that she has a lot of feelings in the car because there's a lot of sounds she can't filter. She can't control. She can't manage. They're out of her control. But what can she do to cope with that? Put on the noise-canceling headphones. So know their window of stress tolerance. Some kids can't handle Costco, Target, and Vons in an afternoon. It's just too much. We tend to project adult characteristics on children until we know they have limits. There's only so much they can handle. Like, for instance, a lot of kids have trouble going to birthday parties because there's so much stimulation. So I ask parents to observe, watch, and listen. Owl, and sit back, and you'll know when your child comes running to you and make a note of it. It's been 45 minutes and I can see my child start decreasing their window of stress tolerance because they start acting out. They're trying to manage their environment. They start to feel out of control. So they start controlling others. And it's the parent that recognizes when we go to birthday parties, I need to check into my, with my child at the 40 minute mark to ensure that they're regulated, they're eating, they're soothed, they're nurtured so that we can expand their window of stress tolerance. That's what increases, is the parent who understands, helps the child through an experience that's intense, and then they build that really resiliency. Yeah. Memorize those five A's, ask yourself, what, is, what do I think my child needs right now? This will help you understand what's driving the behavior. Don't assume negative motives. Again, because our brains are Velcro for negative, experiences. We're going to look at there's a negative motive here. When we begin to do that and assume it's the parent that walks into the child's room and goes, how are you doing? Is everything okay here? What, do, what am I not saying? I'm assuming something's going wrong. When we do that, we actually make that motive more prominent. Now the child has this feeling of I'm doing something wrong and most likely they're going to end up doing something wrong because they're then going to feel insecure and see that their parent is looking at them, that you're doing things wrong. And that can cause anxiety for a child. And this comes from Daniel Hughes's work. When we assume negative motives, we actually create negative motives. If you know me, see me, and 